Hello, I'm Ted Gandolfo, welcoming you to the sixth in a weekly series of shows entitled Assassination USA. My guest tonight on tape is Mark Lane. And the reason I'm doing the show in this fashion is because I think the people should be apprised of what transpired when Mark Lane, on September 17th of this year, an open debate and confrontation for the first time between a Warren Report critic and a high-placed member employee of the Central Intelligence Agency at the University of Southern California on September 17th. Uh, the CIA man was David Phillips, who was, who was in charge of the complete Western Hemisphere for the Central Intelligence Agency for the past 25 years. I think it is a most important confrontation, and the people, as I mentioned, should be apprised of what was said there. And that will comprise the first segment of Mark Lane's confrontation with Mr. Phillips. And the second segment, which you'll hear also tonight at the conclusion of the Lane Phillips debate, is an interview I conducted with Mark Lane on October 31st by phone relating to new developments in the Martin Luther King assassination and in his, Mark Lane's, representation as counsel for James Earl Ray in the very recent escape trial of Ray in Tennessee. So here is the first segment, the confrontation between Mark Lane and David Phillips of the Central Intelligence Agency, followed by my phone interview with Mark Lane for this show. I want to thank the Dean, Dean Loring, and Paul Chaffee and the others who have uh, been so responsible and bring about here at USC this first serious confrontation between the victims of the excesses of the intelligence organizations over the years and those responsible for those excesses. This is not the ultimate step. This is not a trial at Nuremberg. Perhaps that will come. Probably not. But at least we are now beginning the very opening stages of a dialogue. And we will talk about character assassination, Mr. Phillips. We really will. Talk about a 12-year effort of the Central Intelligence Agency to destroy the character and the reputation of anyone in this country who dared to say before the official moment, evidently now, when it is permissible to say so, that I support the investigations into the assassination. We'll talk about what the Central Intelligence Agency did and tried to do to every single critic of the Warren Commission while Mr. Phillips was in charge of the Western Hemisphere for the Central Intelligence Agency. But first I want to talk with you for a moment about an incident which took place just after this morning's session, because most of you probably did not see it. You remember Mr. Klein speaking this morning and telling us how he's against ad hominem arguments and personal attacks and he deplores and decries all forms of violence. After the session ended, I walked over to him in the lobby there and said, Professor Klein, my name is Mark Lane, put out his hand and we shook hands. And I said, I want to ask you about a statement that you made this morning. I don't want to go back into the history of the Central Intelligence Agency now. I don't want to deal with the myths or the facts or the speculation or the defenses or the attacks about the CIA. I want to ask you something about what you said today, not the past, today. You were the chief intelligence officer for this country at the time that action was taken against the Republic, the Dominican Republic. And I said, you were the one who, you told us, that you recommended to the United States government based upon your intelligence, what should be done? And I said, it seems to me that relationships between countries have to be based upon a certain respect 
for other countries. I said, Professor Klein, you summarized the history, the culture, the literature, the language of the people of the Dominican Republic by saying, and I quote, the Dominican Republic was a lousy little country and always has been. Not 20 years ago, here, this morning. And I said, was that statement dripping with chauvinism? And if that's what you say to us at USC, what were you saying to your cronies, your colleagues in the CIA when they were planning action against that country? And he said, and I quote, you are the most disgusting of the lot. You've exploited the ignorance of these people, pointing to you. You've exploited the ignorance of these people to make a fortune selling books. <laughs> and uh, then I said, Professor Klein, I'm going to ask you for an apology for making that statement. And he said, if I say one more word to you, I'll take a poke at you. <laughs> but I did then drop my briefcase and say, proceed, at which point he left. But think of, think of, forget that amplification, think of what Mr. Klein said this morning. This is no minor character in American history. The deputy director of the Central Intelligence Agency in charge of intelligence for the CIA, today addressing students and scholars and others at the University of Southern California referring to this country as the Dominican Republic was a lousy little country and always has been. This is a man who opposes ad hominem arguments, violence of all kinds. Okay. Now, we are told that the secrecy has ended. He told us that there's no more secrecy. There are no more covert operations. Now, how he knows that since he left the CIA in 1974, how he now is privy to the lack of secrets of the Central Intelligence Agency was never made clear, but the secrecy is ended, and Mr. Phillips tells us too. He comes to us open and above board, telling us everything. But if you pick up his book, which Mr. Ellsberg was kind enough to uh, give to me a few moments ago, he talks about, in his preface, very first page, about the early days of December 1974. Professionally, I was pleased with the course of my career, after 25 years in secret operations, he goes on to tell about the ultimate rank of a the CIA officer can achieve, except for presidential, presidential appointment. So there he is. 25 years with Central Intelligence Agency. I refer you to this year's Who's Who in America. Take a look at Mr. Phillips' biography as given by him. I'm here too. And I know how you listen to Who's Who. And I know they ask you. And every year they ask you to update it. You know that Mr. Phillips was never, never with the CIA? Never worked for him. 25 years, gone. You know what he was doing in Havana in 1958? Until 1961, when the Central Intelligence Agency, during that period, had entered into a merger with the Mafia, with organized crime, to kill Fidel Castro? You know what Mr. Phillips was doing? We now know, of course, he was with the CIA, but that's not what you will know if you read this issue of who's who, the current one. You know what he was doing in that period of time? proprietor of the David A. Phillips Associates Public Relations in Havana, Cuba, from 1958 to 1961, and so on. Uh, there are copies of these available if you want to read them and ask questions of Mr. Phillips later about the end of the secrecy and the beginning of the truth. I'm going to talk to you for just a moment about the efforts by the Central Intelligence Agency to destroy the critics of the Warren Commission. I know about that because just recently under the Freedom of Information Act, I was able to secure a vast number of files from the CIA. This is what they were doing at the time. Here's a document. All of these documents are available for your inspection. The conclusion of these remarks. Here's a document which indicates the Central Intelligence Agency had been able somehow to steal a copy of the advanced proof copies of my book, Brush to Judgment, had it before I was able to get it, as a matter of fact. And the first review of the book was uh, in Langley, Virginia, by agents of the CIA. 
They didn't like it too much. And they decided to send their review and their character assassination of me and of every Warren Commission critic throughout the world. Who'd they send it to? To the chiefs of stations of CIA in every single country where they existed in the world. For what purpose? Well, they say it right here. Our organization, this is the CIA they're talking about. And they're talking about the assassination of President Kennedy. Our organization is, itself is directly involved. Among other facts, we contribute information to the investigation. The aim of this dispatch is to provide material for countering and discrediting the claims of the conspiracy theorists so as to inhibit the circulation of their claims throughout the world. Did you think that was the job of the CIA? To destroy the First Amendment to the very best of their ability? But they went further than that. And so what the action should be, they list a five-point program to destroy the critics of the Warren Commission. And what were we doing at that time? We did what Mr. Phillips did today. We said we support a full-scale investigation. We think it's important because there are questions. Mr. Phillips has joined us. He's a little late. Uh, we have actually received previous support before then. The Gallup poll showed that, taken this year, over 80% of the American people were convinced that there was a conspiracy to kill President Kennedy, and only 11% believe that Oswald did it alone, and probably more Americans that still believe in the tooth fairy. So we end up with almost no thinking people in this country supporting the Warren Commission conclusions. But how did the Central Intelligence decide to destroy the character of those Americans who dared to stand up and raise this question? Five ways, and the first one, picked time and time and time again in their own memos, is say they are financially interested, say they're making money from the sale of their books. And Mr. Klein is carrying forward that conspiracy today here on behalf of the Central Intelligence Agency. So that was his reason. You know, when you hear words like disgusting coming from the mouths of, them, of officers of the Central Intelligence Agency, I think you ought to turn for a moment to the Los Angeles Times of August 4th of this year, in which we find the new director of the CIA, Stansfield Turner, saying that the activities of the Central Intelligence Agency over the years was abhorrent, turning human beings into guinea pigs, poisoning their own agents as well as the rest of the people. And then they talk about this program. I quote from the Times. Under a project known as Midnight Climax, testimony indicated, CIA operators decorated one safe house in the style of a Porsche bordello and employed prostitutes to administer drugs to unknowing subjects. I resent being called disgusting by the proprietors of whorehouses in this country. <laughs> now we get to something, I, I will just hit one more thing to see I did. If we went through the hundreds of pages of documents of what the Central Intelligence Agency did in order to discredit us and destroy us, how it was the CIA that after we had entered into a, a, a program, the CIA and the State Department, after we had entered into a, a contract with BBC Two, to show a program, a film which I produced with Emil D'Antonio called Rush to Judgment, and have an open, full debate. It still holds the record of being the longest studio-originated program in the history of BBC, how it was the United States government, the CIA, and the State Department that leaned on the British authorities and forced them to violate the contract and to turn it into a debacle. I knew it at the time. I wrote about it in a book called citizen's dissent. I presumed it happened at a cocktail party someplace. I did not realize that it was a result of absolute continual pressure from the CIA and from the State Department to force BBC to that night to become the voice of America, but not the true voice of this country. But one last word in the efforts of the Central Intelligence Agency. You see, when this effort was going on to, to destroy the reputation of the critics, there was a man named Joachim Justin, a decent man, born in Germany, that becomes relevant. Fled from the Nazis, fled from Adolf Hitler, went to Denmark, and spoke in Denmark and said, I warn you, the people of Denmark, Adolf Hitler is a, it will one day march into this country, and you should arm yourself. Well, Joachim Justin later fled from Denmark, ended up here, and was in fact the author of the very first book critical of the Warren Commission, a very early book. 
I'm flawed because the 26 volumes were not available to him, but he raised some very important points. Well, the Warren Commission was really desperate in its effort to attack the critics, and so the Warren Commission asked if there was any background information which could be secured to discredit Mr. Justin, and the CIA came up with it. You know what they gave him? The Gestapo file. The Gestapo file, which the Central Intelligence Agency had secured from British intelligence, who had secured it from West Germany. The Gestapo file, saying that Joachim Justin was considered politically unreliable. And as a result, his citizenship, the Gestapo suggested, should be stripped from him because he had spoken against the Fuhrer in Denmark. And all of his property should be confiscated. And that's what happened. And the Central Intelligence Agency gave back to Earl Warren and the other liberals on the Warren Commission who poured over this document and utilize that as they sent it throughout the world to the CIA in an effort to discredit Joachim Justin. Politically unreliable, according to Adolf Hitler's <coughs> intelligence organization. It's not so strange, it was the Galen organization, the Nazi intelligence organization, which helped to establish the CIA. It's not so surprising they feel a certain amount of camaraderie, nor is it surprising when Mr. Liddy comes out of jail, that he quotes in perfect German Adolf Hitler, that I have not been destroyed only makes me stronger. Yes, there's a need for an intelligence organization. There's no question about that. Unfortunately, every country in the world has to have an intelligence organization. Do we want one which is one which is comfortable in a fascist state? Or are, are our standards a little higher? Are we entitled to something a little different? Intelligence agency that gathers intelligence but does not try to politically and in every other way destroy people in our own country and those abroad who disagree with us. Talk to you for a moment about the Kennedy assassination, not just because Mr. Phillips raised the question, but because it's a matter of some concern to me, and judging from the questions earlier, the afternoon, a matter of some concern to many of us here. Mr. Phillips, in his book, says a few words about uh, one he really knows about the Kennedy assassination. is Lee Harvey Oswald in Mexico City. And he's also convinced, he says, that, uh, well, well, I know a great deal about Oswald's stay in Mexico, according to Mr. Phillips' book, page 142, much of it by questioning agents, reviewing the records, coming to a conclusion based on many disparate items of information. While I certainly can't be sure Oswald was not involved in some sort of conspiracy back in Dallas, I'm confident that he was not recruited in Mexico City by the Soviets or the Cubans to assassinate Jack Kennedy. And thereafter, there's a little footnote saying it was revealed in 1975 that Oswald wrote a letter to the FBI in Dallas threatening to blow up the Dallas police station. That is not true. That just to deal with that footnote, the agent who said he received the letter, and I heard him testify before the Committee of Congress, the subcommittee of the FBI Oversight Committee, chaired by Congressman Edwards, said, in fact, the letter offered no violence at all, that he was going to take action unless the FBI stopped harassing him and his wife in saying he did testified and said nothing whatever about blowing up anything. In any event, uh, setting aside the inaccuracy of the footnote, let's deal with the heart of the matter, and that is what Mr. Phillips knows. Mr. Phillips knows that Oswald was not involved with the Russians or the Cubans, right? He told us that. That is not what he and his associates in the Central Intelligence Agency told the Warren Commission. The Warren Commission report is a fraudulent document because they were held hostage to the terror of the Central Intelligence Agency. We now have the documents, which are now available. What did the war, what was the Warren Commission actually told by the Central Intelligence Agency? Mr. Phillips played a very important part in that. What were they told? The Warren Commission was told that Lee Harvey Oswald in Mexico City called upon a KGB official in the Soviet embassy there his official cover title was Vice Consul. Actually, he was the head of the KGB in charge of assassination and terror in the Western Hemisphere. Mr. Phillips knew about that. He was in charge of the Western Hemisphere for us. To use that term much loosely. And that's what the CIA told the Warren Commission. The Commission never published, but we now have those documents. The CIA documents. They terrorized Earl Warren. Because they then said, he then went back after meeting with the KGB official in charge of assassinations of the Western Hemisphere. He then went back the next month and killed President Kennedy. Well, what would anyone think just seeing those two documents? Oh, my God. The Russians 
may have been involved, even if they were not, even if they gave no advice, if this information ever gets out, what would the American people, people insist on? It was to that lie told by Mr. Phillips and his associates, the Warren Commission, that this whole nation has been held hostage since November 22, 1963. And what is the proof that Oswald was even in Mexico City? There is none. I believe the evidence indicates quite clearly Oswald was never even there, although Mr. Phillips tells us he, that's one thing to be sure. I'd like to read one more little thing from the paper. This is a, from the New York Times News Service, and it's dated 6 June. And it's all I know about what's been going on recently in the House Assassinations Committee. Mr. Lane obviously knows a great deal more, since they, according to his statement, have given him my testimony. But this is published in the Washington Star from the New York Times News Service. The House Select Committee on Assassinations, which has been in operation for eight months, has, become, has come up with virtually no new information of evidence related to the death of President John F. Kennedy or to the Reverend Dark Martin Luther King, Jr. And it is discovered that much of the so-called, quote, new information, unquote, on which Congress based its decision to reopen the investigation in error, according to a well-placed committee source. We certainly have come up with nothing earth-shaking, the source says, and much that witnesses tell us is in conflict with what they supposedly told people who have written books about the assassination and who have provided the basic leads of the committee to pursue. An examination by the New York Times has determined that it was Mark Lane, the author and lecturer, who provided on the basis of his published work most of this quote, you lead, unquote. I can hardly believe it. I thought that the 13-year period of false statements circulated by the Central Intelligence Agency against the critics of the Warren Commission had come to an end. But now I've graduated to the same position Jim Garrison. We don't have the exact quotes from the CIA. They utilize documents which they have played a part in promulgating and having published. Every man is here. Maybe you remember Judgment in Nuremberg. I just sat here thinking of the scene in Judgment in Nuremberg when during the trial of the judge, the defense lawyer starts to do all over again what is brought the Nazi war criminal before the court. And here it is again, before your very eyes. The lies that the Central Intelligence Agency has had published in the Washington Post and the New York Times are now all for the truth. Not by Mr. Phillips. He wouldn't get involved in name calling. Oh no. And he quotes Mr. O'Leary without using his name. Jeremiah O'Leary said, if Mr. Lane ever says in an open way, not in a veiled fashion, that's one example. What he has to say about me, I'll sue. I've said it all over the damn country. I'll say it again. It's not safe. Say it to your friend. I'll tell you what, not, what we know about Mr. O'Leary. He was listed by the Central Intelligence Agency as a friendly news media source who had published false information at the request of the CIA and who did so. He was identified by his own newspaper, the Washington Star, because of his association with the CIA. He was listed by the church committee according to FBI records, as a man on the FBI list who would publish false information for the FBI at their request and did so regarding the death, the murder of Martin Luther King. Is that clear enough for you, Mr. Phillips? Can you tell Mr. O'Leary what I said? Will you make a note about that? That's what I said, and I'm ready for a suit, and I'll go further. I'll do something that neither you nor anyone else in the government who circulated lies and participated in this program of character assassination against Eastern Americans has ever done. I will waive my right to his being a public figure so that he can sue me right on the merits. And I'd, li I'd like you to say that about me now. When you get up, tell me that you will waive your rights, the fact that I'm a public figure and therefore can hardly bring an action against anybody. Say that to the microphone when you stand up, that I can confront you in court in an action against you for libel and slander for what you've said here today and that you will not plead the fact that I'm a public figure. Say that, and then we'll answer these questions under oath. George o. McMillan, I described as a friend of the FBI. He describes himself 
as a man who got secret information from the FBI files about the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King. I have his letter where he said it. Who is George Lardner? Who is Jeremiah Leary? Who is David Byrne with the New York Times? The very same people who have published over the years false information given to them, this kind of information given to them by the Central Intelligence Agency and the FBI. And they're still doing it, and they're still calling him as if Mr. Foster, well, I just read in the paper this morning, but if he read his documents a week ago, he would have read the origin of it. Let me give you an example of CIA conduct in an effort to destroy the Who Killed Kennedy Committee in England. This is what it says about the Who Killed Kennedy. The, the British Killed Kennedy Committee appears to be anti-American, predisposed to criticism, people of the far left, and people of communist sympathy. I'm going to read to you the names of every member of the Who Killed Kennedy Committee of England. It's a small list. Remember the CIA description without giving the name of this organization. Here they are. Mr. John Arden, playwright. Mrs. Carolyn Wedgwood Ben from Cincinnati. Wife of Anthony Wedgwood Ben, a member of parliament. Lord Boyd Orr, former director general of the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization and a Nobel Peace winner. Mr. John Cole, the publisher. Professor William Empson, professor of English literature at Sheffield University. Mr. Michael Foote, member of the Parliament. Mr. Kingsley Martin, former editor of the New Statesman. Sir Compton McKenzie, writer. Mr. J.B. Priestley, playwright and author. Sir Herbert Reed, art critic. Mr. Tony Richardson, film producer and director. Dr. Mervyn Stockwood, Bishop of Southwark. Professor Hugh Trevor Roper, the Regis Professor of Modern History at Oxford University. Mr. Kenneth Tynan, literary manager of the National Theatre and chaired by Lord Bertrand Russell. Is that an accurate description of that committee, far left, pro-communist, anti-American. It reads like the who's who of English-speaking literature and letters. But that is the CIA's view of the world. Speak of conspiracy, speak of conspiratorial-minded people, that is their view. And as we stand here today, we see history repeating. Instead of the quoting the newspapers, why didn't Mr. Phillips... Number one, answer my statement that Lee Harvey Oswald was intimately connected with employees of the Central Intelligence Agency. Isn't that really more relevant than what George Lardner thinks about me? Or how much money I have made or have not made? On the question of money, again, the CIA says, we know, here's the document, we know that William Manchester, who supported the Warren Commission, his book, Death of the President, made more money in just selling that book to Look Magazine for one publication made more money than all of the critics have amassed now in 14 years of writing, teaching, lecturing. But don't mention that because he's on our side. Say that Lane is in it for the money. Say that he's pro-communist. Say that the committees are pro-communist. And we heard it. We read it. We read it again. And we heard it again. And so the period of Mr. Phillips may tell us he's no longer with the Central Intelligence Agency. Is there anyone in this room who can be sure that that is true? Based upon the conduct of carrying out the program, which was initiated when he was, had that modest title in charge of the Western Hemisphere for the Central Intelligence Agency. The program goes forward, it's presented here on the platform, and it's presented there in the lobby. Thank <laughs> you.